consciousness. Does not does that not sound a little bit like ascension, like rising above all this mayhem once we face and deal with it in a loving way? So the Illuminati is very much assisting with this, with this process. I mean, I wonder if that is where the saying comes from, love the thorn as well as the rose, or love your enemies. Well, at least now we know why. That is because they are pieces of us. Change. Oh, we do not like the change. We react by fighting, being afraid of it, and we are always afraid of what we do not understand. It is like spending our life running from a dark room, so why don't we just turn on the lights and see what's so scary? And the time has come to face all our fears, and there is nowhere else to run or hide like we have in the past because it's just been filed to the bottom of our to-do deal with pile. But we have been doing this for so long that now it has risen to the top again. Yes, it's out of the unconscious and back into our conscious reality everywhere. After all, how can you run or hide from yourself and your loved ones who keep bringing up your shit? What are you going to do with all the people who you cannot get along with, who are just a mere reflection of yourself of what you do not want to see nor admit? So it is time to deal with this bleed through which is ever so present in our reality. But do not worry, we are ready for this and we can definitely handle this. Remember, there is nothing we are given that we cannot handle. If our life is particularly challenging, which it is, then hey, we must be masters. Because after all, you did not beat 500 billion sperm for nothing. You won that race. to be in this crazy mixed up beautiful planet, especially at this time? Could it be that you wanted to be here to witness a shift of consciousness? You might have forgotten, but your subconscious sure didn't. Are we here to be the change we wish to see in the world? So when it comes to light, uh, so when it comes to light as how much we have been bamboozled by the Illuminati, Whatever we do, we must not direct our anger back at them because it will just come back, bounce back at us with such an intense force. They are rubber and we are glue. Whatever we say bounces off of them and sticks to us. Six sticks to you. Yes, that is indeed true. As this will only amplify the so seeming dire situation we all find ourselves in. We need to understand that with war, it does not matter if you are conditioned to fight on the so-called good side or the so-called bad side, which in fact does not even exist since they will only lose, they will only both lose because they are both duped into fighting. And what we resist persists. How much sense does it make to kill pieces of ourselves? Well, that is like our left hand hitting our right hand and then vice versa. Hate, hurt, discord, and fear is Illuminati food, and it is their energy and power for their world. Funny, much like that movie Monsters, Inc. Another good movie that explains why we are so repressed is mentioned in Pixar's animated movie Bugs Life. It is all revealed in the grasshopper's reasons for bullying the ants, and why they are making the ants into slaves. Check it out for yourself. Guys, order another round, because we're staying here! Yeah. What was I thinking going back to Ant Island? I mean, we just got here, and we have more than enough food to get us through the winter, right? Why go back? But there was that ant that stood up to me. Yeah, 
Yeah, but we can forget about him. Yeah, it was just one hand. <laughs> one hand. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. It's just one hand. Yeah, boss. They're puny. Hmm, puny. Say, let's pretend this brain is a puny little ant. Did that hurt? <laughs> no. Well, how about this one? Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> how about this? You let one ant stand up to us, then they all might stand up. Those puny little ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if they ever figure that out, there goes our way of life. It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. That's why we're going back. Does anybody else want to stay? He's quite the motivational speaker, isn't he? Let's ride! Yes, movies are definitely telling us what is going on, particularly the kids shows. You just have to develop our eyes and ears to see it. My dears, every one of you are artists of life. You are artists of love. Unconditional love artists. We all love a good challenge, a good adventure, and indeed we have got one. Just another lie we have been told that life is mundane. Um, not. The key is to love the thorn as much as you love the rose. Fall in love with your problems because they are shaping you into the person you need to be in order to do what you came here to do. But not just that, you're, it's, you can't necessarily control the problems that happen in your life, but what you can control is your emotions and your actions afterward, and that really makes all the difference as well. You can use it to work for you, you can use it to work against you. It's really up to you. We have that choice at every moment in our life, depending how conscientious we will be in those moments. So, now I have a question for all of you out in YouTube land. If love is the most important, most powerful thing, like we've always been told and taught, then why does it not rule the world? If you say because evil rules the world, well, that is interesting. Do you really even know what evil is? I'm dyslexic. And I wonder why this world is backwards and why lived, spelled backwards, spells evil. How many people do you know who are like the living dead or feel half alive but mostly dead? Ah, the living dead means to not be truly living in our full potential, or even in the moment. Not like a little child who is fully living. But that soon gets discouraged, because in the land of the zombies, they want to feast on our brains, meaning think what? like them, be like them, a uh, sheeple mentality. Which is, we, which is, why lived, spelled backwards, is devil. And to live your whole life not fully living is to deny yourself at your birthright. Looks like it is not such a bad thing to be dyslexic after all. Since the world in itself is so backwards and upside down like Alice in Wonderland, we're... <laughs> so then, I have another question for all of you. If love trumps all, and is the most important, most powerful thing of all, then why does it not rule and govern your world? What's your excuse? We are all love containers, and we are always given countless opportunities, moments to experience them in love and gratitude. Whether it be with ourselves or with others, with nature or life. Kids do not need a reason to be happy, they just are. Could it be that they know they are love in itself? I know it sounds a bit silly and cliche, but the truth is, and I have tested this out for myself, that to be in such a state of love and non-judgmental, unconditional kind with ourselves and life, our problems and enemies transforms right before our eyes. You will see that it is indeed a conspiracy theory. But, it is not what you think. 
It is one of awakening and an angelic kick in the ass. Life is mad for you. Once you realize this and love it back unconditionally, then you will become